The invention of the guitar pickup in the early 20th century allowed musicians to plug into a new sound that would later help define rock and roll. Making one kind of guitar pickup starts with a toothy steel part. The technician applies glue to the spine and presses plastic strips to the glued areas for full adhesion. He glues a second toothy steel part to the first, creating a bobbin for wire windings. The plastic strips create a gap to isolate the parts electrically. He applies clear polyester tape along the inner edges of the bobbin. The tape will serve as electrical insulation, supplementing an insulating coating that's been applied to the metal. Using an abrasive wheel, he scuffs off the finish on the end of the bobbin to prepare it for soldering. The scuffed bobbin is the one on the left. He mounts the bobbin to a winding mandrel. He wraps hair-thin copper wire around the end of the bobbin and activates the winding mandrel. As it spins, the bobbin takes up more copper wire, at first settling between the teeth and ultimately building up a wire wad that's 4,000 windings thick. By assembling a bobbin with thousands of copper wire windings, he's created a path for magnetic energy. He solders the ends of the copper wire to the bobbin. He applies a direct current through the coil and gauges the electrical resistance. It falls within the acceptable range, so he solders connection cables to the windings. He then submerges the coil in hot liquid wax. The wax will encase the wire windings to prevent mechanical vibrations. He inserts brass pins in a press fixture. He positions a steel channel so that the pins poke through holes in it. He flattens the heads of the pins with the press while allowing the ends to protrude. He slides rubber and steel washers over the protruding pins. The washers will stabilize the assembly and prevent feedback. He mounts a brass plate to the pins and places more washers on the pins to electrically ground the assembly. He presses the pins to flatten them, securing the plate to the channel. He attaches a second steel channel to the plate, parallel to the first one, and grounds it. The dual coil assembly will have a higher output and it will better resist electromagnetic interference. While most pickups have magnets inside the coils, on this pickup, the magnets are outside the coils. This approach is meant to reduce hum from electrical interference. He solders a ground wire to the unit and applies more solder to one of the pins in order to connect the coil cables. He inserts the coils in the channels. Moving on to the pickup's outer casing, a laser engraves the trade name into the steel. A burnt chrome finish is also an option. Burning chrome casing causes a bluish discoloration that adds visual interest. He now pipes a generous amount of epoxy into the casing cavity and inserts the pickup. He solders wire from the cover to the pickup to ground the unit. He places the pickup over the strings of a guitar and plugs it into an amplifier. He listens and confirms the tone is good. He measures the resistance. He also tests the direction the current travels through the pickup. This is called phase. And he assesses the strength of the magnetic field. This is known as polarity. It's taken about 15 minutes to make this guitar pickup. It should last for years and provide plenty of good vibes.